over to Joey McKinney, uh, co-founder or founder, excuse me, Joey, uh, with Appalachian Apparel. Joey, welcome. Thank you very much, Ryan. Thank you, Jared. Uh, Colby's on here too. Thank you, man, for everything that you've done to help us out through all this. You all have been, uh, you know, just a, an absolute uh, priceless resource to me as a small business trying to get started here uh, in this Appalachian region and just trying to push that industry, you know, that, that everybody's uh, working towards trying to revitalize. And, and just like you all said, there is a future here. And, and that's what I wanted to focus on when I built this company. So um, <clears throat> for those of y'all that don't know me, my name is Joey McKinney. Uh, I founded Appalachian Apparel in September of 2017, um, strictly as an online company at the time. And since then we've grown to have a brick and mortar store in Hazard, Kentucky. And we're actually getting ready to open a brand new store in a multi-million dollar development in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, as soon as all this, as soon as all the COVID-19 stuff uh, passes by. So um, I'm gonna jump into my presentation here. Make sure this is popping up like it's supposed to be. You all good on that? All right, um, one of the biggest things with me, uh, one of our taglines and, and kind of our motto is don't be average, be Appalachian. And the way that this company was started and the way that I got into uh, the retail industry and e-commerce and everything else is, is far from average. It, it's not, um, I never went to business school. I never uh, had a dream of, of owning a retail company, so to speak. It was always just kind of a thought that I had that was in the back of my mind. Um, so today I want to talk to you about how we got started, um, how we utilized e-commerce and how we started into e-commerce with our web store, and then how we're driving sales, especially now during this time, during this economic downturn, how we're driving sales through the social media uh, to, to continue to push our website and continue to push our reach and our sales. Um, this is one of my favorite quotes. Uh, you'll see some of these throughout the presentation. You know, the best way to predict a future is to create it. And when I first started Appalachian Apparel, uh, a lot of people, I had a lot of pushback from different people saying that, you know, it's not gonna work. We're in Eastern Kentucky, we're in Appalachia, um, downtowns are dead. Um, and nobody wants to buy shirts that pertain to Appalachia. It's just not a thing. And for me, the answer to that was to create um, create that future and create that industry from the ground up. Uh, like I said, we started in 2017 strictly as an online store. Um, I was working actually as a nurse at the time. And one weekend I came across um, a business that I'd worked for as a teenager where I actually learned how to do screen print graphic design. And they, they had closed their doors and they were looking to sell. So I wanted to buy just a manual press just to make some shirts for myself and some friends. And I ended up walking away from there acquiring the entire business. Uh, and then the, the whole thing from, from start to finish of production and, you know, all the equipment used, uh, everything needed to make a brand from the ground up essentially. And once I got started, I had the idea, I knew what I wanted to do with it. Um, our online sales, and our social media reach just kept rapidly expanding and expanding and expanding. And a lot of people, especially from this area, wanted a place where they could come in and see the shirts in person, feel the shirts, because we've, we've always prided ourselves in saying that we make the most comfortable shirts that you've ever worn. And up to this point, nobody's challenged that. So we're just going to keep going with it that, yes, we do make the most comfortable <laughs> shirts you've ever had. So um, we, in, in September of 2018, uh, we opened our first store in downtown Hazard, try to create our production facility here. So all of our logistics, uh, the shipping, the packaging, the production, everything is done here in Hazard. Um, and obviously with the growth that we've had, uh, having that expansion, you know, anytime you, you have growth, uh, your boundaries have to expand. And obviously the, the top choice for us to expand was gonna be to the heart of Appalachia, which is the Great Smoky Mountains. Um, you know, that's the, the number one visited tourist attraction in the country. Um, and just the amount of people that are there and what Appalachia represents is just the heart and soul of, of that Smoky Mountain Pigeon Forge uh, Gatlinburg. 
uh, region. So we started really pushing for a space there and trying to find a space and we've been working hard to get that place open, which now it's been kind of pushed, kind of put on hold due to, to all the things going on with COVID-19. But we're hopeful that as soon as this is over with, we'll be, be ready to open those doors and create that, um, that retail shopping experience for people in a, in a uh, tourism centered place like uh, Pigeon Forge. So for us, building a brand, um, you know, it started with the concept of I wanted to, I have a lot of friends that are local artists that are incredible artists. And I wanted a way to use those, uh, those friends and use those people and use those artists and their styles to create a brand, to create, um, you know, shirts that represent Appalachia, that represent the history here, the culture here. Um, you know, and just kind of build on those things. So the first thing, you know, obviously we had was the concept. And again, it was something that I had thought of for a while, but not really sure how I wanted to put it into practice um, until this opportunity came along for, for me to acquire the <clears throat> sports world that had closed down. And then I really started thinking about, uh, you know, putting the work in and, and putting your feet to the ground to, to get running to see what we could do with it. One of the most important things for a brand, especially starting out, is being recognizable. Um, you know, a logo, if you think about Nike, if you think about Under Armour, if you think about Champion, Pepsi, <clears throat> any of the major national brands or world worldwide brands, you don't have to have the wording. You just have to have the logo that, that instantly says, this is Nike, this is Under Armour, this is quality, this is what I'm getting. And the importance of creating a logo um, is, to me is one of the most important steps because you have to have that instant recognition with your brand. Once you have your logo, uh, the first thing that I did as soon as I had this logo set and I knew this was the one, <clears throat> I started filing for uh, the trademark of the logo because obviously if you have something that, that you really love that you work for, um, you don't want somebody to, to come in and steal that out from under you. After we had the logo, after we had the trademarks, we began, began production of our shirts, our logo t-shirts like you see here in this slide. From there, I started working on the website, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And then uh, finally, social media, using uh, social media. So it's kind of like step-by-step -step of concept to the logo. Once you have the logo, you get your trademarks. From there, you begin, begin production to sell it on the website, and then you use social media. To Sorry, that was loud. Um, so going back to the logo, you know, this is a, a quote that I found, a logoless company is a faceless man, and anybody can have a brand, anybody can start a brand, but if you don't have something with that instant recognition, you know, you're forgettable. Um, Names can be catchy. Uh, the things that you do, whatever you produce can be catchy, can be, you know, something people want, but without that, that again, that recognition, um, you're easily forgettable as a brand. So once I came up with this logo, um, you know, we went through probably 10 or 12 different ones, different styles that we wanted to work with. I knew kind of what I wanted, but I never could get it exact. Um, so one of the biggest things that I would stress to anybody trying to start a company, trying to come up with a logo is don't do it yourself. Um, work with an actual professional logo designer. You can find, you can look up hashtags on Instagram for logo design, for logo designers, any of those things. Um, and you will find people who actually, this is their profession is they know how to create that catchy logo, that, that eye popping, the instant recognition, um, logo for your brand and, you can really get it done relatively cheap uh, compared to what you would think it, it's going to be. If you can't find what you're looking for on Instagram, Fiverr is another uh, excellent resource, and I'll have the link to that at the end of the presentation. Fiverr is nothing but uh, freelance artists, developers, website marketing, commercials, animation, pretty much anything that you need done, uh, you can find a, a, somebody to do that freelance for you on Fiverr. So those are really good um, resources to use when it comes to, to developing your logo. 
uh, the, the protecting your work, filing for your patent or your trademark. Um, I, I looked this up last night just because I wasn't sure. I couldn't remember exactly how much it costs. It's around, I think, $220 to file for a trademark. But if you Google uh, filing for a trademark, you're going to come up with all these third party resources and they're charging five, seven, ten, twelve thousand dollars um, to file your trademark for you, to file your patents for you. For me, I, you know, the main thing I wanted was the logo so people couldn't steal that logo, couldn't steal that, that design, that idea. And, and I, I filed the paperwork myself. It takes a little bit longer. Um, you'll get some communication back from the patent office on things that, that they can approve and things they can't approve. Um, for mine in particular, when I first submitted it, they thought I was trying to trademark the word Appalachian and trying to trademark the word apparel. Whereas I just had to change the wording to say the phrase Appalachian Apparel Company as a whole. Um, you know, and that was all that they needed to change on mine. It was a pretty simple process. It takes about six or eight weeks to actually get your trademark back. Um, but that is one of the most valuable tools that you can have because if you're going to be on the internet, you're going to be on social media, people are going to try to steal that stuff. People are going to take your designs. People are going to copy whatever they can do that they see you having success with. Uh, they're going to try to mimic that. So having your patent, having your trademark is, is I would say before you put anything out whatsoever, make sure you have that stuff in place. So we do our website through uh, a, a web host called Weebly. There's all kinds of them out there. Uh, we bought our domain from godaddy.com. It's really cheap. You can go in there, you can search uh, what you want it to be. They'll give you suggestions if exactly what you want isn't available. Uh, you can change it to .net, .org, .cc, so many different things. But, but GoDaddy.com is a really cheap and easy way to, uh, to find the domains that you want. So I'm going to click into our website here and just show you what it looks like. <clears throat> um, if you click shop now through our, our social media post or if you just go directly to the website, this is where you're going to come up. Um, you know, we try to keep it really clean, really easy to read, really basic. Uh, you don't want a lot of things in there to kind of uh, distort the website or to um, gum it up, so to speak. You know, a lot of things that are hard to find, you just want things there, clean, easy to read, bright, where people can see them easily. Uh, and it doesn't have to be anything fancy. If you go to the shop all, we try to keep this consistency with all of our, our designs on here. You can go through here, you can pull them up. Um, you know, everything kind of in the same format, the same background, uh, the mock-ups that we do. And again, this is a really basic one, but it's very effective and it was so easy to do through Weebly. Um, I want to actually take you to Weebly over here. So this is the page editor. <clears throat> um, up here, especially with Weebly, Wix, uh, Square, a lot of them are pretty much set up the same. Um, you just click to add a page. You type what kind of page it is you want in here. So for me, you know, we had the home page and then we created the shop all page. And with the shopping page, <clears throat> it lists all of our products down through here. We can go everything that we have listed on there. You can just go through, click on each product's individual page, throw a picture on there. Um, click your price. And again, this stuff is so easy to do uh, through Wix, through Weebly, any of those things. It, a lot of it is copy and paste or just inserting an image and then typing what text you want and they take it from there and, and they always make a really good clean website. And what I like about Weebly in the editor is if you go right here, you can click and it will show you what the mobile version is going to look like. So you don't have to create two separate websites for desktop and one for mobile. And it gives you the preview of exactly what you're going to find on there. And I think all of them do that. So that, you know, that's a really good, uh, the, the whole process of the website design, a lot of people are, are kind of intimidated by and they don't know how to get going or how to start with it. And these, these websites, the way they're made now, they walk you through every step of it. So, there's, there's really, it's not that intimidating and 
you don't have to have a website degree or design, <clears throat> design certificate or anything else to be able to create an effective website that people are gonna enjoy and people can easily navigate. Hey Joey. Yeah. Your, uh, your product photos, do you physically take photos of those or are those mock-ups using uh, a graphic design tool? These are, um, I use mock-ups. I have a program through uh, Photoshop <clears throat> where it, it'll mock them up and it'll put the wrinkles on them and everything else. Uh, you can actually get, there's several of them. There's one called Place It. Um, there is one that I get through Creative Market and it's specific to this brand of shirt and the colors. Um, it's just a flat lay mock-up is what it's called. And you can Google um, apparel mock-ups. You can Google flat wear or flat lay mock-ups. And there's, there's thousands of these out there. They're really easy. Um, but with mine, again, I just stay consistent. I use the same ones, adjust the colors, place the artwork on it. And it, it's really easy process to, to do it that way. Okay. Let me go back to the presentation here. Okay, so this was, you know, what I just talked about. <clears throat> Her domain is hosted through GoDaddy. Her website's done through through Weebly and Square.com. Square actually bought Weebly now, so they're they're uh, integrated with each other, and that's why I actually continue to use Weebly for my website. The my brick and mortar store in Hazard, my store in Pigeon Forge, my website, all things will be integrated as far as tracking inventory, as consistent pricing, as um, you know, everything across the board can be handled, can be fulfilled, any orders can be done through any location and it still continues to track my meat, uh, track my inventory through all, uh, all avenues of it. When I get an order from the website, we'll get a notification we pull the note, you know, we pull the order up on the website and um, we actually linked uh, shippo.com to our website, which is a, a, uh, a postage like prepaid postage kind of website. You can do prepaid posted labels through uh, the post office, through UPS, through FedEx. Shippo kind of integrates all of them and it's free to access that and you get, um, it's about a 30% discount on your shipping. But when we get these orders, uh, we have a, uh, a thermal laser label printer and we just print them off. It prints off the packing slip and it'll print off a, a pre-made shipping label with their address and a tracking number already attached to it. So for us here in Hazard being right next door to the post office, anytime we get an order, we can usually have it fulfilled within, you know, a matter of minutes or, or an hour at the tops, depending on what the situation is. Pull the shirt out, package it up, um, throw all the goodies in there. We always include these these um, social media cards in our orders. We got these from Vista Print. Um, it's really cheap. Uh, I think 500 of them is about $7 or something. Uh, but we try to include these along with the business card in every single order that we ship out as well as a handwritten thank you note um, when we're able to do that as well. Have you but, found the post office to be the most economic? For, for t-shirts, um, I've talked with uh, FedEx and UPS and for anything, I think it's under about three pounds. UPS, uh, the post office is the cheapest you're going to get as far as rates. Yeah. Um, if we do big orders, we do custom orders. So we'll be sending 50, 7,500 shirts to, <clears throat> to businesses. Sometimes those will go through UPS um, just because they end up being cheaper that way when it's a large parcel box versus just a, an envelope with shirts in it or a, a package of shirts. Yeah. But also again, we're right next door to the post office. So we, we can pull the shirt out, package it up, throw everything in there, stick the label on it put it in the mailbox right next door to us. And, you know, um, it usually takes about two to three days shipping. Uh, for you recently did a, uh, a nice little time-lapse video on your Instagram and Facebook page of kind of the process on packing your t-shirts and then taking them down to the post office. Right. 
Yeah, that was, I try to do a lot with time lapse. People enjoy time lapse videos more than, than long, boring, drawn out videos. So I try to do a lot of time lapse stuff just because I like the, the perspective of it. To, makes me look like I'm working a lot harder than I actually am too. So. <laughs> Um, so social media, they estimate that there's about 2.95 billion people on social media uh, as of today, which means if you're using social media uh, to drive those sales, you have access to 2.95 billion potential customers for free. I mean, you know, it doesn't cost anything to create a business social media page, doesn't cost you anything to run that page, to manage that page. Um, and, and the reach for that, I mean, you cannot put a price on the, uh, the advertising side of it. You can't put a price on the word of mouth and, and people sharing things over and over and over to, uh, to boost your sales. Um, this is just another one of the quotes I wanted to throw in there. Um, you know, if you're looking at what you're doing today and, and when I first bought the building downtown uh, in Hazard here before we opened it, I'd painted on the window really big, uh, do what you must until you can do what you want. And from 2017 up until October of last year, I was still working full time as a nurse um, because financially we weren't in a spot yet to where we could run this full time uh, without having that other, the, the other income still to, to support us. Um, so, you know, I kept that in mind all the time is like, I have to keep doing what I have to do in order to get to the point where I want to be where I want to be. And, and this quote always stuck out as being, you know, what am I doing today that's getting me closer to my end goal of what I want to, where I want to be tomorrow. Um, so social media with 2.95 billion users, there's millions and millions and millions of other businesses out there. Uh, that are trying to do exactly what you're doing. Um, you know, if you're, again, if you're just starting out or if you're an established business and you're just trying to gain traction or, or, or gain uh, more exposure and it's just not working out for you, <clears throat> you have to have something that stands out. You can't just be, again, you can't just be another face, faceless person that's easily forgettable. Uh, so what I try to do, you know, my entire business is based around Appalachia, based around the outdoors, and that's actually who I am. That's the life that I live. So it's easy for me to create that consistent content because that's really what I'm doing with my day-to-day -day, uh, life. You know, we're, we're going on hikes, we're out in the, uh, you know, outside, out in the mountains doing things, just living that Appalachian lifestyle. So you want to be consistent with that. You want to have a consistent feel to everything that you post through social media. Um, I learned early on that begging people to come in and buy stuff or, you know, Hey, go to our website, buy this, please buy this, buy that. It, it, it's a, it's not a good, good avenue to take, but producing content that people like to see and produce or putting, you know, pictures out there of your products in real life situations and, and having other people tagging you through those, you know, with that, that consistency, um, that's really what's going to, increase your numbers, increase your followers, inc increase your reach and all that you do. Um, with us, pricing and quality was, was one of the hardest things that we've had to, to deal with up to this point and still uh, moving forward, we're still working on that because, you know, we wanted it to be a brand where people, anybody could enjoy it. Um, you know, obviously not everybody wants to spend $30 on a t-shirt. Um, but we felt like our products were just as good as those that were $30 and $35. But people see that uh, it's hard to, I guess, disassociate that price versus quality thing because, you know, people obviously, they go to Walmart and, you know, the clothing that they see in Walmart, they don't associate that as being the same quality as they'll see somewhere else or, you know, not to, I guess it's apples to apples, but comparing like a Walmart brand to Nike, you know, people always want to immediately think that that Nike is a better quality brand. And for us, uh, the people that are doing the same thing that we're doing, the same kind of our competitors are using the same shirts, the same materials, the same styles that we're using um, and charging a lot more for them. So, 
we don't want that to look like we are a, a lower quality product or company than they are. So we've had to adjust pricing a few times through the years. And even now, uh, moving into Pigeon Forge, we're going to be next door to REI, who provides or, you know, they sell Columbia North Face, you know, those kind of shirts that people expect to pay $30 for. And if we're next door to them, we don't want people to think that we're just like a souvenir grade shirt. Um, so it's really important to find that balance of, you know, the pricing, the quality, the profit margins that you're going to have to find. It, you just have to work with it and keep playing with it until you find that happy medium. Um, another big thing that we do that makes us stand out on social media is we use feedback and we use um, our customers, we use our followers and polls uh, in order to get that feedback of putting shirts out there and saying, hey, what do you want to see on the shirt? What do you want to see? What kind of designs? <clears throat> what kind of products do you want to see? That way we're, it's not a guessing game of, well, let's try this out and see if people like it. We know ahead of time um, what those people want from us and we try to produce what, what our customers want. Also, a lot of our repeat customers, I've gotten to know really well. I reach out to them time, from time to time. Um, you know, sometimes they'll get freebies thrown in with their orders and things like that. But I know what their interests are. <clears throat> I know what they like. I know what they don't like. But I try to keep it on a personal level with them because people really connect to that, especially in this region. Having that uh, personal connection to your customers is, is a huge, huge step that they will pick you over the, the, the next guy nine times out of 10 just because of the, the attention you're giving back to them. And then the last thing that, <clears throat> or one of the, uh, another main thing that sets us apart is our involvement in the community. Um, because we do all of our screen print here, you know, some shirt companies, they don't do their own screen printing. They don't have their own stuff. Uh, we do everything here in house. So we're able to do these community outreaches, uh, you know, and help people in the community help different things that are going on. And we don't do that for the attention. Like that's legitimately who we are as, as people, you know, everybody involved with this company, we want to see our community thrive. We want to see this area thrive. We want to see, uh, uh, a revitalization and a rebirth of these dying downtowns. And when we can join things like this and bring the communities back together in these kind of ways, you know, it, it's it, one, it's good, good business, but more importantly, it's being a good person and being a human being. And that's what we all need to be focusing on. And it's such a divided world right now. We just need to focus on each other and, and really supporting and uplifting each other in these times. Um, one of the big resources on, on Facebook and Instagram um, is boosting ads. And to put it into perspective, uh, how many times have you been driving down the road, you hear a commercial or you see a billboard, and you obviously pull your car over because everybody's a, soft drive, a safe driver and we don't text and drive or anything like that, but you pull over, you look it up and you buy something right there versus how many times do you scroll on Facebook and you see something that you like and you go, oh, that looks cool, click on it, shop now, buy it, and you're done. You know, it, it's those kind of impulse buys that you really want to like capture people, capture first time customers uh, on that kind of thing. So the, the cost of boosting an ad through Facebook and reaching hundreds of thousands of people versus spending hundreds of dollars on a billboard or a, or a radio ad it's just, there's no comparison to the two. Uh, this was a recent ad that I boosted, one of the shirts that I did, the Like a Good Neighbor Stay Over There. Uh, I spent $50 on this ad. Uh, you can see in the numbers there, there was 122 clicks uh, through to the website um, from this specific ad. And we actually sold, I think I looked it up, we sold about 73 of these shirts just from this, this single ad. Not to mention a lot of the people that bought this shirt scrolled through the website and bought other shirts as well. So it wasn't just like a single shirt being sold with the, these. We probably, I would say we sold well over 150 shirts uh, in a matter of days just with this ad that I spent $50 on. When you boost the ads, it actually gives you all of the demographics, all the feedback of, um, you know, the age groups, the male versus female, 
location of people that are, are reacting and responding to these ads and you can use that for the next ad that you boost, you'll know exactly what, what people you need to target and uh, potentially reach more customers. This was, um, I wanted to highlight this because <clears throat> our social media growth when we started in 2017, uh, that year we reached just over 50,000 people. Um, this year up to date, uh, we're well on track to break the 1 million, pe 1 million mark of accounts reached probably by late July, we'll hit that number. Um, so that's just an example of how fast social media can grow for you, how fast you're able to gain momentum with customers, with, um, with people, you know, other accounts seeing what you're doing. Um, and that's the reach number that you see is how many people actually saw your ad, not how many people clicked on it or anything like that, but that's how many people fiz or actually saw uh, something from you posted. But, you know, you hit that 1 million mark and you just keep growing and keep growing and keep growing. And, and I mean, the rapid pace which we've been able to grow through social media has just absolutely been mind blowing with the content we've put out there. Uh, the numbers you see on the side, uh, the graphs on the side, that was the week after uh, the COVID-19, everything shut down. And you can see um, how important having that visibility and having that e-commerce side of a business is. Uh, our growth was, you know, we had 250% uh, of people reach growth. Post engagements, that's people that actually like, comment, share, whatever on your post was up 367% and we had over or almost 4,000 page views for our website um, during that week after the COVID-19 started shutting everything down. <clears throat> and this just goes back to knowing your customers. Um, you know, customer reviews are uh, such an important factor, you know, keeping the customers happy, knowing what they want, and being able to uh, connect with them and, and create that personal connection with them again is just, it, it, it's, you, you can't put a price on that. Uh, so far to this point, every platform that we have reviews on through Google, Yelp, Instagram, Facebook, um, through our website, I mean, we're, we're five out of five stars on everything and people, people you know, notice that consistency and that quality of what they're getting. And they know that when they get something from us, if they get one shirt, if they order something two months later, they know they're going to be getting that same quality and consistency with what, what we're providing. And that's so important to have in what you're doing. Um, real quick, I want to talk about overcoming crisis. You know, as this uh, began to grow throughout the country, <clears throat> and we saw how people were reacting throughout the country. We kind of anticipated this was coming. We knew that there was going to come a point where we were going to have to shut our retail storefront. And um, you have to start shifting your focus to, uh, to what it is that you can still provide during times like this. Um, you know, a lot of small businesses, unfortunately, probably are not going to make it through this. I saw this morning where even Logan's Roadhouse closed 270 of their stores and they said they don't even know if those are going to open back up. <clears throat> so, I mean, you know, people are getting hit hard with this. Um, so, you know, a big thing for us was, again, we, we kind of anticipated it. So we tried to plan ahead, you know, as much as we could. There wasn't a whole lot because we didn't know exactly how sales were going to go, how people were going to react when things started shutting down. But fortunately for us, we were able to um, jump on, get the supplies that we need to keep a pretty good inventory so we can get these orders out fast. Uh, we can get things out to our customers, you know, quickly without the delay, with the logistical delays that we're seeing all over the country right now. Um, adapting your business style, you know, for us, we couldn't necessarily um, increase what we're doing downtown Hazard, but one thing we were able to do is we've donated almost 500 shirts to people who are making face masks 
for medical workers and, and I guess people in general. Uh, there's all kinds of people on Facebook that are just stepping up and, and meeting those demands. You know, people that know how to sew and do things, but their problem was they were running out of material. So we, we've had boxes and boxes of shirts here and some misprint shirts. So I just put a post out and anybody that was making those masks could come by. I'd, you know, give them a bag of shirts. But up to this point, we've, we've given almost 500 shirts to these people making the masks. And they're able to make probably six or seven shirt uh, masks from each shirt. So, you know, really doing our part to help out that way that we can uh, and just trying to stay again with that community involvement. And the biggest thing, biggest thing that I can tell anybody that has a dream for starting a business is do not give up. If it's something that you're passionate about, it's something that you really believe in, you know, Appalachian Apparel, I feel so confidently about like anytime there's doubt, it, it, it's easily uh, just pushed aside because of what I've been able to achieve up to this point. So, you know, if you fall seven times, get up eight times. And uh, one of my favorite quotes was when you can go no further, take one more step. And a lot of people, I've heard it said several different times, you know, people quit the day before they were on the brink of success. So you never know what tomorrow's gonna bring. If you quit today, you'll never know what success you could have had tomorrow. You never know what kind of breakthrough you could have had tomorrow. So regardless of what's going on, um, find a way to keep pushing through, kind, find a way to, find, to get the resources that you need. Um, find somebody to just encourage you, get on, look up motivational speakers on YouTube or motivational quotes or whatever you need to do. Send me an email, send me a message and, and I'll give you about 30,000 motivational quotes to tell you not to give up because that's what drives me every day uh, is just knowing that, that if I quit today, what tomorrow could have been. Um, these were some of the resources that I've talked about through the presentation you know, Weebly, Square, that's what my website, web store is done through. Uh, my shipping is done through GoShippo. My uh, domain is hosted with GoDaddy. Fiverr.com is the freelance artist. If you're looking for fonts, if you're looking for graphics, if you're looking for apparel mockups, Creative Market and the Hungry JPEG are really good resources to have. And if you're doing design work, obviously, Adobe Creative Cloud, that in, includes Photoshop, Illustrator, all of those things. Uh, those are, are absolutely priceless resources. And then all of my artwork, I use Procreate for the iPad Pro to get everything print ready. And to close, the biggest thing, you know, we, we've had a lot of people, um, we've had pushback from the get go. We've had people saying that what we are doing will not work. And, and I've always said, you know, some say we dream too big. I think they think too small. So when, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what anybody else says. It doesn't matter what friends say. It doesn't matter what family says. If you're passionate about what you're doing, if you're passionate about what you want to see and what you want to achieve, don't worry about what anybody says because there's always going to be negative Nancy's. There's always going to be people to put you down and, you know, actions speak louder than words. So just use that to fuel your desire, to fuel your passion, push through, knock it out of the park. Jared, it's all yours. And Joey, thanks so much. It's an incredible story. Appreciate your perseverance. Your uh, we our hashtag one year at the summit was faith and grit. Uh, speaking to the fact that one, you got to believe in what you're doing, uh, and believe in sometimes things that a vision that other people can't see, uh, and then it takes the grit, the perseverance to get through it, and the times you doubt that it might be real, that you keep going to that next step. Um, and I think you embody that. So one, appreciate the, the work you're doing with founding the company and continuing to grow it and uh, really being a, a proof of concept, you know, to share, uh, share what's possible when you really set your mind to it. And, you know, we have such a core belief that connectivity, the digital economy, broadband, all these things bring new opportunities to rural Appalachia, whether it's remote work, e-commerce, service, um, you know, deliveries online, all these things are, uh, are possible. I mean, there were really the, it, it is possible to build a, a, a thriving economy in rural regions. And so appreciate you kind of proving that concept. 
Um, there's a few questions popped up in the Q and A. If you're an attendee and you've not put one in there, uh, feel free to throw one in. If you'd just like to ask a verbal question or speak to something, uh, there's a button. Uh, you can raise your hand and I'll watch for that and unmute you. We got about 12 minutes here, so we'll just have a little bit, a uh, little bit more discussion. Um, one, somebody was asking just price wise, <coughs> feel like a website is expensive. What are the, uh, what's Weebly? Uh, can you give any insight on what Weebly costs per month or per year? So Weebly is free. Um, Wix is free. A lot of those to, to build an actual website is free when you get to the, the commerce side of it with the checkout payment processing, all that, that's where the cost comes in. And, and I think Weebly right now is like twenty nine ninety nine a month. Yeah. A square, um, you know, I, I use them. They process all my credit card orders, um, Apple pay, Google pay, uh, all of those things. And, and the charge on that is, I think it's 2.7% plus like 10 cents or something per, per purchase. Um, you know, most of the time that equates to a really small amount and, it, and it's easy to eat that cost because of the convenience of having those things. I think it's safe to say that you got more than your return on investment with your website. I think we spoke yesterday and well, 65 some odd percent of your business is done uh, solely online. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's upwards of 65 to 70% somewhere right in there is, you know, online sales, so. And you ship to all 50 states now? Uh, 45 states and seven countries. We're still awesome, where, man. Is where you have shipped to? Yeah, yeah. That's We're missing, awesome. missing about five states right now, um, but we'll get those by the end of the year. And uh, you know, we've just we've been beyond blessed with the reach that we've been able to to create through social media. That's great. Uh, good question here about social media. Do you have a dedicated person to it, to doing the social media marketing? SEO efforts? I wish that I did because it has been a roller coaster for me. Um, I, I, as far as unread messages and getting back with people and trying to answer all those questions, so far it's been uh, about 95% me. And I would love to have somebody dedicated to handle all of the social media stuff for me. Um, but, but yeah, for now, it's just been me. Yeah, that's a, I think it's a good question. Uh, well, there are some, we've got some resource partners with SOAR in the region that, you know, and being a small business owner myself, I've, uh, I'm a co-founder of a guitar store in the Hockville area and we do over half our business online. We got a web store, we do eBay, um, and, and a lot of social media. It's hard to find that point where you've grown enough to say, I can afford a full-time person just to do that. Uh, but there are some companies within the region now that, you know, that, that kind of a contract, they can really over, without having to hire a full-time person, you can get some of those services where they can, they can manage your social media for you, build out the campaigns and do a lot of that work for you. Um, that's kind of a happy medium where you go from, I'm going to do it myself to I can't hire somebody. There's that gap there that I think there's some good companies in the region that could help fill that. Absolutely. Um, yeah, you talked a little bit about your customers, but have you seen online grow the last three weeks since, you know, the COVID-19? We have. We have. Man, it's been crazy. Um, you know, we, we put out a few shirts that we normally wouldn't put out. Obviously, you know, uh, Andy Brashear is like the greatest thing since last bread right now around the country with his coronavirus response. And yeah. A lot of people message us about making uh, making shirts about Andy, and you know we we made a few of those, and then the the like a good neighbor stay over there shirt has been. I think we've sent that shirt to about thirty two or thirty three different states already. Um, you know, people just like it, and and again, one of our followers on social media is a local State Farm agent, and she sent that out to all of her state farm agent friends. So we've got orders from state farm, uh, you know, offices that have bought one of those shirts for everybody that works in their office. Um, so we're getting, you know, orders of 15 and 20 of those shirts at a time, just from that one simple post of having her see it and then share it with her friends. So, you know, again, that just embodies the power of social media. 
<clears throat> How do you handle sales tax going to other states and countries? Uh, so the way it's set up, uh, Square actually does it automatically. Um, you know, anything that's sold in the state of Kentucky, if it's shipped, uh, if it's billed from the state of Kentucky, then Square automatically adds that Kentucky sales tax onto it. Same with Tennessee when we open down there. Um, you know, anything that's sold in the Tennessee store will have Tennessee sales tax, but other states, um, they don't have to pay the sales tax for product shipping from Kentucky. So Square handles all of that automatically for us. And it's actually, we do our sales tax uh, quarterly. So every quarter I can go right into my Square dashboard, uh, click on quarterly reports, and it gives me exact the exact numbers that I have uh, to put into the tax forms to file the taxes, what I have to pay, you know, all that stuff. It, I mean, it takes like five minutes. That's great. Yeah, a typical rule of thumb is if you don't have a physical presence in a state, you don't have to collect sales tax from that state. That's kind of the rule of thumb right now. So if your only physical space is in Kentucky, you only have to collect sales tax in Kentucky. Lots of states, this has been a huge retailer debate for multiple years, you know, states trying to force out of state retailers to charge sales tax would be crazy. You know, if you had to do that for all 50 states and fill out reports for all 50 states, that's a whole nother debate and topic. But yeah. as it stands right now, only where you have a physical presence, do you have to collect and, uh, and turn in sales tax. Um, I had to miss the first half to the, yeah, we're going to be emailing out. We're also streaming it live on Facebook. Um, so you can find it, the entire thing there. If you're on Facebook, on SOAR's uh, Facebook page, we'll also have it on our there's a future.org uh, business as unusual landing page. Uh, we'll get this uploaded there and all these resources will link to it. And if, I think Joey will probably send his presentation and we can have it on there yeah. as well, yeah. a slide form of it. And that's my contact. Um, if anybody has any questions <clears throat> about what I'm doing that, that I didn't cover in here or you know, if they want to ask specific questions to me about some of these things, you know, not necessarily in the public thing, send me an email, you know, I'd, I'd be more than happy to, to help with anybody that I can. Um, even somebody that's trying to put me out of business. If, <laughs> if you need help, I'm, it's just who I am. I'll help you do whatever I can. So, uh, you know, feel free to contact me in any form to, to have those questions answered. And uh, Tracy, uh, list of companies who can help with social media. Uh, small, not ready to hire someone full time. Looks like we got one on here. Emily, go get it. Uh, she's she's okay. sending her email. Uh, we've got a couple others. We we'll, we can uh, our business innovation champions. I'm not sure where your company is, um, but if you reach out to one of our champions, we can get you a list of those uh, those resources um, that we've seen be pretty be pretty supportive and helpful and other. Uh, other efforts. We've been chatting with Emily over the last uh, couple of weeks. She actually started a couple of websites for restaurants. Uh, so if you're a restaurant on the Zoom call, eastkentuckyeats.com, uh, I think is her site. If you are a restaurant and wanting some free promotion, you can send her the info um, and she'll get it up on the site for you for free. Any other questions from anybody? What's next, Joey? Um, next is waiting to see what the coronavirus does and get Pigeon Forge open. We've been, it's been a year long process getting down there, but man, we're just, we're anxious, anxious to get in there and see what, you know, what that's gonna look like for us to be. <clears throat> Every time I'm down there, it's, it's just, it's so humbling and mind blowing to me to look at, you know, the, the, commerce that is Pigeon Forge and the tourism that is Pigeon Forge and to know that like something I created in my garage uh, is going to be part of that and our signs up down there and and it flashes through with all the other big names and you see the you know the Appalachian Power logo and it just man it's crazy so that, that, that's what we're we have some big things on the horizon we're, we're hoping for but Pigeon Forge is kind of my, my my big focus right now. That's great. I remember, you know, it was, uh, I guess a year ago when you were in our Coast Charters program uh, talking about 
you know, some of those first steps you were taking to try to get your Pigeon Forge store open. Uh, it's just been incredible, uh, some of the work you've been able to do down there. And, uh, you know, it's, now it's almost ready to be open. So uh, yeah, it would have already been open, I guess, if the, the crisis hadn't happened. Um, we, we were shooting for probably last week of April, you know, probably in the next couple of weeks being open. Um, but, you know, we've kind of slowed things down. But, you know, we'll, once this passes and once people are out ready to travel again and, and spend money, we'll be we'll be ready to open doors. And, and I know you talked a lot about uh, some of your inspiration and ways that you get inspiration. Um, who are who is somebody that you follow that you get most inspiration from? Gary V. <laughs> I love Gary V. You know, he, he's uh, he's not for everybody. He's loud, but. Yeah. Man, if you're, if you're feeling bad about your business one day, you just you can watch any Gary V video, and he just be ready to run a marathon and knock walls down. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but Gary V and then Casey Neistat. I've watched Casey Neistat, you know, on YouTube from the get go. He's been one of my just one of those people that I've always followed and stuff, and and he's done really big things. Uh, but but yeah, Gary V pumps me up. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we're ready to wrap this thing up. Thanks again. Uh, Joe, we really appreciate you taking the time today, putting the, the effort in to prepare a fantastic presentation, lots of background and concept, valuable stuff, insights from somebody who's been through it. It's always helpful if you're new getting into this world to hear somebody has been doing it for three years and say, I tried this, that didn't work. Cause we all know there's those moments and those times where, uh, most of our success has come from a failure at some point. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so, so being able to give some insight to the person who's earlier on and maybe we can prevent some of those and get them started quicker. Uh, one thing you'll see from our entire team, we're all in this for everybody to win. We're, we want to see winners in Eastern Kentucky uh, and, uh, and from entrepreneurs and business owners. We want to see people grow. And, and the best thing you can do, the best thing every individual, especially business owners can do right now for this region is grow your business, figure out a way to bring revenue from outside Appalachia into Appalachia, build value and hire people. Um, at the end of the day, we got lots of challenges in Appalachia, Kentucky. Uh, they're all rooted in the foundation of the economics, right? So if we can get, if we can build businesses that are hiring people, uh, this will go a long way in solving a lot of the other problems. So, uh, and each of you can do that. The federal government can't fix us. State government can't fix it. We got to fix ourselves. It's the, uh, it's, it's in our name, shaping our Appalachian region. It's not just our organization, but it's a network of partners that are part of a movement that believe there's a future in Appalachia. Joey's one of those guys. We appreciate you. Um, everybody, I hope you have a great day. Thanks for tuning in. Again, here's the website. If you want to catch the recap, we should have it up probably by the end of the day today. Um, but you can immediately go find the entire video on Facebook on our store page. Guys, thanks. Uh, have a great day. Keep on keeping on. Thank you all very much. Thanks. Thanks, Joey.